for as well as tables. First off, I'd like to welcome you to the Kick family. Today I'll be showing you how to properly assemble your Kick Solstice 55 inch squeeze ball table. I hope this instruction video is helpful. With no further delay, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you want to do is open up your box and take a look at your contents. Then you want to go ahead and lay down each piece out onto your floor individually. If you are assembling a foosball table on a hard surface, I do recommend you lay on a large blanket or a large piece of cardboard. That way you don't damage your foosball table during the assembly process. Next, you want to match each part to what's inside your instruction manual. After sorting out all the parts in the box, and once you've matched each part to what's inside your instruction manual, if you notice any missing or damaged parts, please contact Kick with pictures of your shipping label, the box label, the box itself, and the damaged part. Our contact information will be listed at the end of this video. For step one, we're placing our playing field P3 on top of the groove that you see here on both side panels P1. You just want to make sure that the wood grain finish on your side panel is faced out and that the ball entry hole you see here is faced closer to the floor. You can go ahead and grab your playing field, making sure that the graphic side is faced down. Go ahead and place it on top of that groove. And do the same thing to the other side panel. For step two, we'll be attaching both of our end panels P2 to both side panels P1 using our H4 bolt and our H6 washers. Now you just want to make sure that the end panel of the wood grain is faced inward towards you and that you are aligning both side panels uh, to this groove that you see here on the end of your end panel. You just want to make sure that you're aligning the hole on your end panel to the hole that you see here on your side panel. And insert your H4 bolt and your H6 washer. And you'll secure using your Allen wrench that was provided. Next, we'll be attaching our playing field to the bottom of the assembly using our H8 screws. You will notice that there are 16 pre-drilled holes on all four sides of the playing field. Just go ahead and insert your H8 screw. I will be securing our table using um, my impact driver fitted with the Phillips head tip. Next, we'll be attaching our braces, P5, and securing them to the bottom of our playing field using our brackets, P6, and our screws, H9. Before we attach our braces to both side panels, we need to attach our brackets to the end of our brace. So you just want to go ahead and line up your bracket to the end of the brace, making sure that it's flush to the end of the brace. Then insert your H9 screw and tighten. Next, we'll be securing our braces to both side panels using the same H9 screw. Now for this first brace, you just want to go ahead and line it up to the center of your playing field. And the other two braces you want to space about a foot apart. And insert your H9 screw into the side panel and your brace. And tighten. Next, we'll be attaching our go hole P12 over the hole on the inside of the end panel 
these are H9 screw. Now you just want to make sure that you are covering the hole um, on the end panel. And one way to do that is just to go ahead and line both corners of your goalie hole to both uh, edges of the hole on the inside of the end panel. Insert your H9 screw and tighten. Next, we are placing our ball catcher P11 over the hole on the side panel. Now you just want to make sure that the hole in the ball catcher is on the high side. So this would be the low side and this would be the high side. You also notice that there are four holes that have already been pre-scored and marked here on the side panel. Let's go ahead and line up the ball catcher over those holes. Securing our ball catcher using our H9 screw. All right, next, you want to secure your ball uh, runner, P13, between both the goalie hole and the catcher. All right, after you complete the step four in attaching all three of your support braces to the bottom of your table and both side panels and both your goalie hole and your ball catcher, we got one of the next steps, step five, attaching our legs P4A and P4B using our H1 bolt, our H2 washer, and our H3 nut. Now one way to determine if you are um, adding the correct leg to the correct side of the table is you'll notice that there's an angle here on your leg. You, you'll notice that this angle will just kind of sit on top of your side panel and the holes on your side panel and legs should match up perfectly. And go ahead and line up your holes. And insert your H1 bolt and H3 washer. And then go ahead and attach your nut to the other side of your bolt. We'll be securing our leg using our Allen wrench and our socket wrench that was provided in your packaging. Just want to go ahead and then on one side insert your Allen wrench and hold in place and then use your socket wrench to tighten your bolts. Next, we'll be attaching our leg panels, P4C, between both of our legs using our H7 nut, our H6 washer, and our H5 bolt. The first thing you want to do is go ahead and insert your H7 nut into all four holes in your leg panel. Now what you want to make sure is that the groove on the end of the nut, the star-shaped groove, is for one faced out, and that the hole on the end of the nut is aligned with the hole on the end of your leg panel. Go ahead and insert your nut. Okay, after you've inserted all of your H7 nuts into your leg panel, we can now move on to the next step in attaching our leg panels to our legs. You simply just want to go ahead and line up the holes on your leg panels to the holes in your leg. Insert your H5 bolt and your H6 washer. Right. 
and you want to secure using the olive inch that was provided. Once you've completed step six and attaching both of your leg panels to both sides of your legs, we're going to move on to the next step, step seven, and attaching our leg levelers P15 to the bottom base of our legs. This part's pretty simple, you just want to go ahead and screw down your leg leveler all the way down to the bottom base of your legs. The purpose of these leg levelers is to stabilize your table during play, so that if one side is higher than the other, you just unscrew these a couple notches to even out your playing field. You will also notice this rubber ring around the bottom base of each leg leveler. This is to prevent your table from sliding back and forth during rough play. After you completed step 7, attaching all of your leg levelers to the bottom base of your legs, we're going to the next step and turning over our table. Now, this is a two person job, so you will need some assistance for this part of the assembly. What you want to make sure is that you don't rest the weight of the table on either of the legs. So you just want to make sure you turn over the table in one swift, full motion so that all the legs can ground at the same time. After you've had some assistance turning over your table, we're now on the next step, step 8, and inserting our ball entry cups, P9A, and our ball entry sockets, P9B, into the hole you see here on the side panel. I just want to go ahead and uh, insert your ball entry cup into your socket, and then place into the hole on your side panel. We'll be securing our ball entry cup using our H10 screw. And you just want to make sure that the ball entry cup is aligned and flush with the top of your uh, side panel. Insert your H10 screw and tighten. Next, we'll be attaching our ball entry shield P14 uh, to the inside of our end panel. Now you'll notice that there are four holes on the inside of your uh, ball entry shield. You just want to go ahead and align those four holes on the edge and we will be securing our ball entry shield using our H11 screw. Next, we'll be attaching our slide score, P10, to both ends of our end panel. Now you'll notice that there are two pre-marked holes here. You just want to go line up your slide score over those holes. And we'll be securing our slide score using our H12 screw. After you completed all of step 8, we go to the next step, step 9, and inserting all of our rods and attaching each player to each rod. The most important part of assembling your feedball table is making sure that the rods and players are all in the right position. So you want to carefully review the diagram located in the instruction manual prior to inserting your rods. But you want to make sure that you add the correct amount of players per holes in the rod. Here's how to set up the rods and players on your new kick foosball table. Place four handles on each side of the table in this specific order. Make sure the four handles for your home team are in this specific order, as shown in the diagram. Also make sure your players are facing the opposing team and toward the opponent's goal, not the same team or your own goal. You also want to make sure that there's a hole on the correct side of the table where the handles will later go. Now before we insert our rods and attach each player to each rod, I'm going to show you an already assembled table and explain to you the differences between a one-man goalie versus a three-man goalie setup, and the difference between a counterbalanced man versus your regular uniform man. One-man goalie versus a three-man goalie setup. 
With this table, we have the option to have either one man goalie or three man goalie setup. Most beginners and some others prefer a three man goalie setup because of more defense around the goal, making it harder to score, and giving the user more control over the field. While others prefer a more fast paced one man goalie setup, it's completely up to you. To have a one man goalie setup, instead of having the other two outer men on the goalie rod, you replace them with the four black stop rings. Next, place the four green triangle corner ramps you received on each corner of the playing field. These ramps are only for a one-man goalie. They will not work with a three-man goalie setup. You can optionally place the white field lining tape on both sides of the table to prevent any dead spots, if any at all. Be careful when to leave the tape down. It's hard to pick back up without leaving any smudges. Next, secure the four green triangle corner ramps with the four screws that were provided and cover the holes using the four green plugs. Counterbalance men versus uniform men. With your table, you would have received two full sets of different style of foosball men. One set of uniform hard plastic men, and one set of ABS counterbalance men. The uniform men are the foosball men used mostly by beginners. If you keep the players on the rod horizontal, they will fall back down to a vertical position. Or if you free spin the rods, they will just continue on spinning. Whereas the more experienced or regular players prefer the counterbalance men. Counterbalance men mean that there's a weight in the head equal to the weight of the toe. So unlike the uniform men, they will not fall back down into a vertical position if left horizontally or in any other position. They also do not keep spinning like the other uniform men. This lets the user position the foosball men to their liking or technique. Again, this is totally up to you. When securing your players, you want to note that there is a buffer, a washer, then you want to add the correct amount of players for holes in the rod. Then add another washer and another bumper. You want to complete by sliding through the second hole. Then we'll be securing our players using our C6 bolt and our C7 nut. You just want to go ahead and uh, slide in uh, your bolt into the chest of the player, and into the rod, turn the player over, holding the bolt in place, insert your C7 nut, and then tighten. All right, once you've completed step nine and attaching all your players to each rod, now we're in the next step, step 10, and uh, attaching our handles P7 to the other end of our rod. I just wanna make sure that you line up the hole on the handle to the hole in the rod. We'll be securing our handle using our H13 bolt. One quick note. These handles are really high quality. Most other companies use a really cheap rubber slide on handles. Also, these rods are semi-hollow, so they are durable enough for the rough play, yet light enough to let the player have full control over the rod. If you need any rod lubricant, please contact Kick and we'll send you a free complimentary bottle. Next, place rubber end caps, P8, to the other end of the rod. Congratulations! We're now officially done assembling your Kick Solstice 55 inch foosball table. You're now free to enjoy your table with your friends and family. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please visit us at www.kickfoosballtables.com or email us at support at kickfoosballtables.com.